Today, I want to help you guys get started in my restaurant with my top tips and tricks to this game. I've been playing for two days now. I've spent a good amount of time AFKing and auto clicking in order just to gain money. And I think I figured out some pretty good stuff. But first of all, guys, a big shout out to Carbon Meister Plays. It's kind of small YouTube channel. He's growing massively right now. He's got some awesome videos on this game, and he actually taught me this basic layout to my restaurant. So go ahead and check that channel out if you're looking for some more in-depth stuff. Let's get on to our first tip. First tip for beginning the game absolutely new, or even if you're right now at this level, this still applies when you want to make the most money possible, and that is that you are the greatest tool in the restaurant. You can, like, for me personally, I stand here AFK all the time and have an auto clicker pressing E. I automatically seat all of my customers. So you can see if I was just to sit here and keep pressing E randomly, people would rock up. Immediately they get seated. My, well, even though my waiting staff, David, is right here and Kyle's on the side, doesn't really matter. I'm doing the work. This can also be extended to when your restaurant is kind of small where you can even cook things. So, like... I could take food out, or I could prepare food, I can do anything. Look, I got this meal, I can take it to somebody faster than my chefs often can. My second tip is kind of just like a little bit of philosophical advice, guys. This is not a restaurant. You are not running a restaurant. You are running a factory, alright? A factory, guys. Nobody cares about working conditions in this game. There is no negative bonuses for not having pathways. They just walk through the tables like it's nothing. Factory farm this stuff, all right? Just as little space as possible. Everything is about profit and getting that food out as quickly as possible, even if that means having your NPCs glitch through tables. The third one I've got for you here is all about individual seating. This room was... I created this literally for a tweet, okay? I filled this room up with the boost. It looks super funny when everybody's sitting in here. It was just for a tweet. This is a bad room design, okay? The most important thing for actual efficiency is setups like this, where parties of four, like these four right here, come into your restaurant four at a time. So the NPC spawn rate or the new customer spawn rate is exactly the same. They're going to come periodically based on, I guess it's probably a random number generator. And then based on your restaurant's available seating is how many people come at once. So if you only offer tables of four for parties of four, you pretty consistently only get parties of four, which is a lot more money per food delivered than like a single table, which is what this entire floor is built around. This entire floor is single tables, one customer comes in at a time, it's inefficient. I'm missing out on three other customers every time one of these show up. You can ruthlessly completely kick people out of your restaurant by deleting tables. And there is absolutely no punishment for this right now. Really doesn't matter whatsoever. You, you basically run the place, like I said, like a factory. Who cares about the customer? Who cares about your employee? This is all about profit, guys. The gumball machine is an awesome asset to add into your restaurant. These things, although kind of expensive and they only make you like between three to five dollars every time somebody buys one, the more of them you add to your restaurant, the higher the chance is that somebody's going to purchase things. So I've got a row of them lined up here. And most of the time, anyone who eats on this floor will buy a gumball on the way out. They are floor specific though, so if you want to use them efficiently, they have to be on every single floor. So like here, I've got a bunch of them on the exit so that people can buy gumballs on their way out. A similar thing can be said for the jewelry case. This increases your chances of getting a celebrity customer. The chance actually stacks. So. The more of these you have, the more chances you get at a celebrity. Celebrities served, I've served 15 celebrities. I haven't seen a single one of them because I'm mostly AFK all of the time. But I have been putting down these jewelry cases to try and maximize my chances of spawning a celebrity. Now I haven't figured this out exactly down to a science, but you don't really need that many kitchens running in your entire nine floors. Right now, I got two kitchens running for my three floors. I have no intention of adding any more kitchens at this time. I've got a kitchen on floor one, which is kind of compact, but not efficient at all. I could do better. And then I have a kitchen on floor three, which the entire floor is kind of built around. I put the kitchen right in the middle here. Two dishwashers, 
four stoves for cooking and one place for the orders. And then every other square here is four orders. These are tables of four for parties of four. And then on the way out, I got some gumball machines just because they're efficient and it kind of works around the portal. This layout is very ideal. The first floor's layout also works really well. You can always do this. Put your kitchen in the corner or something and just run rows and rows of four party booths. Look how busy it's getting in here. Parties of four make your restaurant look real, real busy. It's very nice. It's probably really important to mention, and we're going to buy a fourth floor just to show it off to you guys. But the furniture that you're using actually doesn't really matter. If you want to do tables of four like this... This has the exact same chance of getting a four party as the regular setup that I've been using, which is the tiki bar or the tiki table and the red booth. The reason I use this is because these very easily like go together. Okay, look, table of four. That's such a great example. Thank you, four people of awesomeness. You could also do this if you wanted to. It could be as cheap as you want. The tier or the expense of the item, like how expensive the chair is or how expensive the table is, has nothing to do with your efficiency. The only time that matters is in the appliances where a more expensive dishwasher obviously is going to clean things faster than a cheap one. So how would I go about actually setting up a new floor? Well, I'm going to stick with the idea that the gumballs work. So I'm going to do four gumballs in every direction because these sell. You would be surprised how much these sell, guys. That should be more than enough to uh, sort of ensure. See, that was a $4 one. That guy spent some money. Feels real good. And then basically, I'm just going to make this fit the best that I can. So this is probably what the most efficient version of a floor is going to look like for me for a little while until I figure out exactly how it works. But basically, back-to-back -back chairs, tiki tables, and this should ensure parties of four. So looking pretty good, although this will get a party of three, this will get a party of two because not all of the chairs are there yet. But they're super cheap. I can just go get more very easily. For our last tip, there are also times that the expense of the chair or table matters. And that's sort of with like the royal table. This increases your ability to get VIPs. It's guaranteed if you're using a royal chair and a royal table. But as for everything else, they don't appear to affect it. And finally, this thing sucks. Don't buy it. It's 10 million and you just, you don't need it. So guys, before I finish up today's video, I want to show you the finished floor just to make sure that you have like a total idea of what it is I'm doing. This is working pretty well for me. If you emulate this, it will work. Might not be the best of the best, but for now it will definitely work. And if in the outro the floor looks different, it's because I'm recording this after. <laughs> anyway, let's go to floor four and this is the final product. So I put the two dishwashers here, which I explain in a minute, I think in the final clip. Obviously, let's see, 2, 4, 6, 8, 9, <laughs> 11, 13, 15 gumball machines right now. And then everywhere else is booths that can have the tables of four, like a so. Now, these are pretty happy customers, even when I walk over their food like this. And then right here, I decided to get 16 of the VIP, no, the celebrity cases. So these are the jewelry cases right here, the jewelry case. These stack, like I said earlier, so I now have 16 times more, whatever the original chance was. And this also is like a good little point to say that it's 16 by 16. That's how many squares there are on each floor. So when you grab your stool or whatever, there's 16 spaces across and then 16 spaces up and down as well. Would have been easier to see with like a wooden bench. You can see like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, all the way to 16 across, and then 16 in that direction as well. So when you're building, you can Minecraft it up and actually pre-plan all of your floors based on the 16 by 16 square. So yeah, there's a final look at the floor. This is still in testing, so I can't guarantee that it's perfect or anything like that. And then on floor 5, I'm going to do something totally different again. I want to see what happens if I have a stove, a dishwasher, an ordering table all in the corner here, then gumballs, and then chairs. So the food could be prepared on the same floor. I want to see if that's any faster per hour, but we'll see. Yeah, you never know with these things. I said one final thing, but here's the actual final thing. Add one or two dishwashers to every two floors. It just, uh, to every single floor. It just makes things a little bit more efficient for your staff members. And because they don't have to take plates out of the dishwasher, they only have to put it in. It just adds more flow to add the, how they move around the restaurant. It's more efficient. 
But anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you'd like to see more stuff on my restaurant, leave a like down below so I know that you're interested. Of course, you can comment. And if you're brand new, subscribe to the channel, turn that notification bell on so you never miss a video. And it will make you an official member of the hashtag blue team. Thank you all for watching, guys. I will see you all tomorrow. Goodbye.